Welcome to the GamerCast Network Video Game Show. This is episode number 186. I'm Chad. Wait, is this 186 or 185? 187. Why would it do that? Oh my god! Oh, I'm so upset. And uh, now why are you upset? Well, hang on. Okay, this is 186. I'm Chad. We got Bob over here. Yo. And also joining us is Phil. Hello. And Ivan. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and soon we'll be joined by Keith. In theory. This week on the GamerCast Network. The end begins with episode 95 of the Post Game Report. This week it's all about God of War 3. On Sarcastic Gamer Pink, Harlequin and Jax cover the Blur Beta, Good Movie Games, and Male and Female Male. Halo 2, what's that? Podtacular takes a look back at its roots before Halo 2 on Live finally kicks the can. Discover the community that brings you all these great podcasts and more at GamerCastNetwork.com. Ivan, what's your complaint, by the way? Just for shits and giggles. I only want his complaint for giggles. I don't want any shits. <laughs> Ivan, shoot. So, uh, I tried. Uh, you can't upgrade from XP to Windows 7. You have to format your hard drive. Right. So, instead of doing that, I created a second partition and installed Windows 7. And then copied all my data. And then came to realize that I couldn't delete my XP partition and reclaim that space as one big partition because my seven partition came after my XP partition and you can't reclaim backwards apparently. So that's my first issue. My second issue was, so then I was going to make an image of my Windows 7 partition and then format the XP partition and then put the Windows 7 partition on the XP partition. Oh, that all sounds like a lot of work. It is a lot of work. And I got through 50%. I saw it imaged the partition, which took like two hours, and then got 50% through putting it on the XP partition, and it aired out. So I would, well, it's essentially boiled down to about six hours worth of work, not me physically working, but of computing work. And I'm right back to where I started. So I'm going to light this thing on fire and go buy a Mac. That sounds actually <laughs> pretty reasonable, considering. As soon as I get verification that Steam is coming to the Macintosh and that most of the games that I play will be available for the Macintosh, I'm totally doing it. And I'll never buy a Windows PC again. Well, we already know that World of Warcraft works in Mac. Pause for one second real quick. And then joining us right now is Keith. Say hi, Keith. Hi, Keith. There you go. Back to your story, Ivan. I'm done. Windows is a f***ing piece of shit. What did it do to you? Did it touch you? It touched me in a naughty place. Let me show you on this doll. <laughs> <laughs> what did it do? Long, drawn story, basically. He's had to go through all kinds of stuff to go upgrade from XP to 7. It doesn't directly do it. It doesn't, huh? <clears throat> no. So what, did they build that to only upgrade directly from Vista? Yes. Now I have a one terabyte hard drive that is split in half because it's retarded. Can you use like an old program like Partition Magic or something to put it back? I don't know. I hate those stupid things though. Because they don't actually do what they want it to do. They only virtually do what you want them to do. Why are you upgrading the XP, from XP to 7? Just because? Do you have an extra PC lying around you needed to upgrade? or? Well, no. I figured that... I, well, I was having issues with XP, it was like a three-year-old box. And I was having some problems, and I was essentially going to reformat and reinstall Windows. And I figured, I have a free copy of this, or uh, 7 Ultimate, I might as well install that. So I did, instead of just reinstalling XP. But yeah, it turns out that it would have been a much easier process had I just frickin' bought another hard drive to copy all of my stuff to and then just wiped out this hard drive but i was pissed because i just bought the problem that i had with xp i thought was hard drive related because i was using an old ide hard drive so i went out and bought a one terabyte sata drive and i thought i'm not gonna go buy a freaking hard drive just to back up my hard drive because i just bought this damn thing I, it was me being stubborn and not wanting to spend a hundred bucks on a on another hard drive when i just Two months earlier, bought a one terabyte hard drive. That's a big hard drive. It is big. And I figure, how hard can this be? I'll split the damn hard drive in two, into two partitions and then install Windows 7 on the second partition. 
and everything worked fine until I got to the point where I wanted to get rid of the second partition and make one big partition, only to find out that I can't do it. Oh, well. Damn shame. Sorry, Ivan. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Okay, on to happy things. What can be happy after that? Ivan's in pain and suffering. And you want to move on to happier things. You insensitive f***. We could revel in it. (laughs) See, Bob, now that I expect from you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so did anyone do anything this week besides have issues with XP and Windows 7? I've been playing Dragon Age. You've been playing Dragon Age. And what are your thoughts on Dragon Age? This is for the PC, correct? Correct. Correct. And what are your thoughts on Dragon Age? It's fun. It's exactly what I thought it would be, which is like the next really, you know, Bioware role-playing game. So it's fun. It um, plays a lot like the Knights of the Ruled Republic and Knights of the Old Republic 2 in that, where it's kind of third person running around in that regard. Uh, They have the different skill trees for your character, and you, you have your party with you all the time. And you just kind of go into menus and switch your characters. But um, it's fun so far. I like the I like the people that I've met so far, and they're in the group. It's a good Bioware game. I mean, we, everyone here would like it, just like we all thought we would. And I'm about, I'd say about five or six hours in. That's about it. But I'm enjoying it so far. So no more needs to be said on that, I guess. Unless someone wants to say something more. <laughs> no more needs to be said unless something wants to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Going on from that, um, now I apologize. This week I did not get a chance to put the notes page together. I was busy. So what stories out there struck people's eyes that they want to talk about? Apparently Taco Bell struck Phil's eyes. Oh, yes. So I, I walk into Taco Bell this week because, you know, I had to make a run for the border and noticed that they... Hang on, let me pull up the email because I forget which games are included. It appears that they are packaging game CDs with classic Atari 2600 uh, arcade games with their Taco Bell kids meals. That's awesome. thought it was kind of hokey, but it's kind of neat to put it out there because I'm sure kids, especially that young, have no idea about any of those games anymore considering they're some of the greatest games ever. Uh, what did we say they were? You got Super Breakout, Asteroid, Centipede, and... Lunar Landing. So yeah, there's like three different game modes, like difficulties and various levels and whatnot. So yeah, it seemed like a pretty neat idea. Instead of, you know, just a rag, uh, a rag doll or a beanie baby type of BS that they normally put with a... I would do that, honestly. I mean, I know it sounds stupid, but I'd do that for Super Breakout. I would get a kid's meal. For dollar fifty. Yeah, I would support that. For nostalgia's sake. The yeah, cool thing is it appears to be compatible with PC and Mac, so when uh, Ivan gets his Mac, you know, he can pre-order his Super Breakout. I was only half listening. Uh, what format is this? PC or Mac. So it's uh, just a PC install. Probably some kind of stupid Flash thing or something. So, uh, okay. Because you, uh, I'm not trying to be a dick to you, Phil, but what's the point of this? I'm could be willing to bet you could find all of those games online in some Flash version. I just found it interesting that they're packaging this with Kids Meal as opposed to, like I said, some stupid plastic thing or Beanie Baby type of thing. They're actually sticking video games in with Kids Meals now. Yeah. Yep. Yep. A lot of yeps this episode. Uh Uh-huh. I found a... uh... So before you get all pissy with me, let me explain the premise before you jump down my throat. I found a cool iPhone game that uh, if it ever makes its way to other platforms would be cool. It's like um, Puzzle Quest with... um, You ever play that poker game where you've got a grid of like 5 by 5 cards and you have to make the best hand? You start off with like 9 cards, 3 by 3 and then you build... You use 2 cards to make a 5 card hand, you know, across horizontal, vertical, or diagonal. So this game is that premise with like a role-playing game mechanic like uh, Puzzle Quest. So you can upgrade your character and buy swords and stuff which do different kinds of damage. So you're doing these things so when you get like one pair you damage your opponent for one point and two pair for three points and a full house for you know eight points or whatever. So it's actually pretty fun. It's kind of cool. It's called uh, the 
cool game that's like Puzzle Quest only with poker. That sounds like that could be fun. Uh, it's called Sword and Poker. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the name is a bit lacking. Yeah, I wasn't too far off with my week description, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the it's a it's a kind of a cool premise. I haven't bought the full version, but the uh, the demo's pretty good. Hey, the light came back on. Ooh, a topic for the show. What what light? What what's it do? Oh, nope, no, it's going off. Our kitchen light has been flickering, and we have to go get those long tube lights to replace it, and we haven't. And the light just turned on now for a little bit. If you lived here, it'd mean more to you. If you had to go, you know, do stuff in the dark kitchen, it'd probably mean more to you than... When you go do that, can you pick me up a couple? Because uh might have been really dim, and I've been told that it's not the light fixture itself, it's that I need new bulbs. Yeah, that's what happens before it, like, starts going really dim and flickering, like... Haunted house style, and then it just kind of goes out altogether. You mean you don't want your kitchen to be like a haunted house? Not when I have to wield blades. You guys already know how clumsy I am. I'll be missing digits. <laughs> okay, I'm going through last week's mail, which you guys didn't do. Because we knew we'd have nothing to talk about this week, and I wasn't even there. So that's how much foresight I had. <laughs> We have to do the uh, math contest because we didn't do it last week because we didn't have you math people around. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's a little problem with that. Uh, I got a couple of entries, which I can't upload to the site right now because I'm not at home. And because Gmail is awesome, I can't... I, I tried forwarding them this morning, but they were blocked because Gmail thought they were viruses and bounced them back. Sweet. Awesome! So, uh, we can either hold off on that contest till next week. Just pick one. Uh, well, I will be here next week, so one math person will be here next week. No, just just right now. Just You've looked at them. Just pick one. Yes. Well, one guy... Okay, okay. Well, hang on. Let me, let me look it up real quick. Because <laughs> I got both of my iPhone. The ones I don't have. Let's see. Here we go. I got the one entry here from Nick. How screwed you are in a zombie apocalypse equals how many zombies there are multiplied by how much they want to eat your brains divided by how many friends you have multiplied by how many guns with lots of ammo you have. If this number is zero, which it probably is, if you're actually attempting to calculate this, then insert number one for this value. Close, but not quite. You, you screwed up slightly in there. It should be how many friends you have that you are faster than. And the last one, this was a guy from a school. Uh, his name was Jason. I think he's a graduate student or something. And he was... <laughs> and he posted a... He sent a link. He sent two links. He sent a PDF called When Zombies Attack, Mathematical Modeling of an Outbreak of Zombie Infection, which is a whole article, which probably was the one that Bob's thing referenced somewhere along the lines. And some article from Miami Herald talking about a disaster recovery exercise for a zombie attack on the University of Florida. Okay. They, they were trying to add levity to their disaster attack plans, and they added one for zombie attacks. You know, like tornadoes, terrorist attacks, blah, 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 blah. So they put one for zombies. Good. One can never be too prepared. Which of those four entries, One okay, Bob, pick a number one through four. Four. I concur. Yes, four. Four is the best number ever. Okay. Then to the zombie contest, uh, that was... Nick, with your division by zero thing, Keith. That was that was him. The one. He was close enough, yes, but it was just that... The, he he would have had a perfect 100 had it been he added that stipulation, which he did not. So there you go, Nick. You win the Steam games. Congratulations. And next week we have a new contest, courtesy of our friends at Game Trailers. Ooh, Game Trailers. So we will talk about that contest next week. That'll give us some content for next week. So what we'll do then. Now, real quick, here is an email. Some mail from a listener. I, and uh, this is a follow-up email to that Remember a couple weeks ago, Adushan, Adushan sent in an email, which you guys did, we did quick fire for? Yeah, I wasn't around for that, but I remember you people doing it. So he sent in a new one. And first off, he wants to send his congratulations out to Bob for correctly pronouncing his name. And he now feels famous because the world famous animator of Shrek pronounced his name correctly. Who, who is this? Wow, world famous, huh? World famous. Who is this guy? Stacy? I think is how you said his name. No, you said his name. It was you. Oh, Stacy. That's the proper way to pronounce it. Good. So he sent in some more rapid fire, quick fire things. Would you have to try these? Yes, we would. Uninformed opinions. Just give us uninformed opinions on what I'm about to say. You ready? Number one. All right. 1,099 games were released in America retail stores last year, which are seven more than 2008. Apricot. Next. I'm <laughs> guessing most of those came out on uh, handheld type peripherals. Clearly, people wanted more games this year than last. Very good. Next. 
Blizzard admits Dawn of War 2 influenced StarCraft 2. I'm not shocked at all. Because it was a really good game. And Blizzard makes all their money ripping off of other games. That's how Warcraft is so good. Look at the original Warcraft, or no, StarCraft. That was freaking Warhammer 40,000. That's all that was. The Protoss were the Eldar, the Zerg were the Tyranids, and the humans were the Marines. Here's one I know very little about. The game Ruse will utilize Windows 7 multi-touch. No, it won't. You're lying. <laughs> Next, Jack Thompson sues Facebook. <sighs> really? How can he do that? Wow, he's running out of people to sue. <laughs> oh, he doesn't have to be a lawyer to do that, I forgot. He's just a douche. Five, Disney acquires Marvel for $4 billion. I thought that happened like a year ago. Yeah, I just hope that doesn't turn into less or more too cartoony. It will. Look at Pixar. Final Fantasy XIV won't have experience points. Final Fantasy XIV won't have gameplay. <laughs> It'll be a cinematic. There you go, Bob. That was the perfect response. <laughs> the FYI, Final Fantasy XIV is the MMO. That changes nothing. <laughs> Everybody in the world can watch the movie at the same time. <laughs> It's probably something like Eve, where you'll just have skills that go up as you use them and not by experience. I have a feeling they probably didn't learn from their first mistake where, you know, all I kept hearing you guys complaining about is killing bugs all day and you don't gain any experience or don't level anything. I just have a feeling they don't learn from that because they're, they just do what they normally do. Number seven, budget for Modern Warfare 2 is 40 to $50 million. That seems, that seems reasonable. Yeah, they're going to make more than that, so I don't think they mind spending that kind of money. I'm, I'm treating this like it's a fact or crap. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 but considering how much it's sold and, like, you know, how many copies it's sold so far. Yeah, all right, whatever. <laughs> and finally, 96 million units of Final Fantasy have been sold. So across everything, 96 million units of Final Fantasy. A lot of people like staring at the screen, not doing nothing. It's just television, except you can say it's a video game. Yeah, what country would that surpass? You're Google Phil. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then you whimper. I gotta do work. <laughs> 96 million would make it uh, number 14 between Philippines at 13 and Vietnam at 14. Population of the Final Fantasy selling universe is greater than that of Vietnam, right? Yeah, it's right there with the Philippines at 13. Good company for the Filipinos. Their hookers are cheap. <laughs> Okay, the only real good story here we got out of all these emails, I think, would be this one. Uh, this was from Nade. Hey, VGS crew, I found this article about a new Sony patent for degradable demos, which is basically you get the full game, and after a while, parts of the game will start being removed or blocked, so you won't be able to play it unless you buy the full game. What do you think about this? I think that's very dangerous on their part, because you know damn well once you have something on your computer, it's yours. And it's only a matter of time before somebody figures out how to keep it or images it right away and prevents it from degrading. So I guess that could be said for all that has to happen is, you know, somebody has to buy the real game once and then just copy it for everybody. But if this is for the the is this for the PlayStation 3, then it's probably not that big of a problem. And we'll just end up being really annoying. I haven't you talk about the uh, the iPhone or iPod peripheral for the buttons and the uh, D-pad, the game bone. The article you sent there, Ivan, which is a follow-up to last week's discussion about the iPhone controller. Yeah, Keith was saying that he couldn't play too many iPhone games. I, the only reason I sent that out was because that's the kind of quality that people are coming up with, and it's ugly, and it's called the iPhone bone or some crap like that. What What would you rather have, though? I mean, it, they pretty much made it look like a PSP, in my opinion, and I, I don't know what else you would do. I, I don't know. I guess they, they tried to go with, like, a theme. It's called something bone, and it's shaped like a bone. Well, I was assuming that was kind of an afterthought after they made, let's make an ergonomic controller, and they put it on the thing and said, huh, kind of looks like a bone. Well, why don't we just call it that? <laughs> I, I bet you. I bet you. And some marketing guy probably got a promotion. That uh, could be. Ultimately, I guess I don't care as long as it, as it is ergonomic and it, it functions well. But the other problem is is that the ones that I've seen, they're all stupid expensive. Like, you're going to wind up paying 40 to $50 for a plastic button holder. I have a question, though. I mean, okay, so this this is a... I didn't look too closely at the picture, but this is a uh, a shell that the iPhone slips in, correct? 
It's yeah, that's what it appears to be, right? And somehow at the bottom it links into the uh, dock, so it can get it can send the signals from these buttons into the iPhone. Right. Okay. So now I have an iPhone, but my iPhone is in a shell, its own protective shell, and I'm not. It's pretty nicely nice shell. I'm not taking it out of this thing. Then you don't get a controller. Exactly. That's what I thought. Okay. Question answered. <laughs> the biggest problem is you're going to have to get every game developer to support such a thing. Because every game currently only supports the touchscreen for controls. And so if you have external buttons, you're going to have to map touchscreen motions to buttons in this controller thing. So you're going to have to convince game developers to support that. I don't think that'll be a problem. I think having to make a controller on the touchscreen is a bigger pain in the ass than just somebody saying, oh no, if you, we have buttons here. That's good in theory, but that assumes that the buttons and button mappings are universal. Like there's a, a standard that somebody can manage to get set because the oh, granted. <laughs> uh, iPhone bone with its, you know, four <laughs> buttons and a D-pad. The iPhone bone. <laughs> I didn't say it didn't sound funny and looked stupid. I'm just saying that's probably just... <laughs> but that's one control thing that somebody has created. Somebody else could create one that's got, you know, shoulder buttons and a start and a select button. And you know what I mean? So you, you either have to have stand a uh, standard, I mean, and then the rest is just ergonomics. You don't have that problem when somebody releases a handheld device because the buttons are all already there. And since Apple has not released a standardized button configuration kind of thing, then so the iPhone bone company is going to have to convince developers <laughs> to support their peripheral. I would be shocked if Apple just didn't make one. It seems silly to not at this point. Well, the only reason I could think is that they have this touchscreen device, which they think is the awesomest thing ever. It's their touchscreen. So by developing a peripheral that has buttons on it, you're essentially eliminating the whole touchscreen mechanism. And if they're going to do that, they could just as easily create a gaming device. Okay. I, I think we could probably call it here. I don't care. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. It's one of those kind of weeks. Dude, it's been like one of those kind of past two months. I know. Well, you know what? Next week, but next week though, Phil, you're going to PAX East, correct? Yes. I don't know how available I will be Sunday, though. You won't be back by Sunday. But the week after that, we'll have something. Huzzah. Play Puzzle Quest 2. Yes, I'll have to try to remember that. No. You will remember it. <laughs> or you'll come home to find your house in flames. <laughs> <laughs> and your legs broken. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it to you to figure out how that works. <laughs> Very good. Okay, I think we can call it there. And that was Video Game Show episode number 186 for Sunday. No more dates. Hey, it was for Sunday. No, no, that's the whole That's the whole point, is you're not supposed to say it's Sunday. Because nobody gets it until Tuesday, and so it's always going to seem like they're late, late. It's Tuesday. Do you have your coat? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody like to say any final words after I say if anyone would like to contact us, you can always email us at mailbag at videogameshow.org Skype us at video game show, or call us at 320-300-GAME Obviously that's the longest number and all normal fees apply. Go Kentucky! Yeah, that's who I got. Shadow Dream Pie to Kansas and Villanova for sucking and losing to lesser teams and breaking brackets, as they say. <laughs>